Gynecological sonography is an important diagnostic modality commonly used to evaluate emergent conditions and many common gynecological disorders. Knowledge of the anatomy and physiology of the female pelvis is an important prerequisite in obtaining and interpreting gynecological sonographic images. The transducer should be selected to operate at the highest clinically appropriate frequency that will allow adequate visualization of deep pelvic structures. For transabdominal evaluation, a 3.5 MHz or higher transducer is employed. Curved linear array, as well as sector, transducers with a smaller footprint are often employed. For transabdominal evaluation, the bladder should be adequately distended to displace bowel superiorly out of the true pelvis and provide an acoustic window to visualize the uterus and adnexa. The uterus is an extraperitoneal hollow, thick-walled, muscular organ of the female reproductive tract that lies in the lesser pelvis. It is inverted pear shape. It measures about 7.5 cm in length, 5 cm wide at its upper part, and nearly 2.5 cm in thickness in adults. It weighs approximately 30 to 40 grams. The uterus is a hollow organ in which the myometrium is firmly adherent to a thin internal layer of endometrium. Externally the uterus is embedded between the two layers of the broad ligament. Anatomically, the uterus lies between the bladder anteriorly and the rectosigmoid colon posteriorly. The uterus is divided into two major parts, the body and cervix. The most superior aspect of the uterus is referred to as the fundus, and the entrants of the fallopian tubes into the uterus are referred to as the cornua. About midway between the apex and base is a slight constriction known as the isthmus. The portion above the isthmus is termed the body, and that below, the cervix. The part of the body which lies above a plane passing through the points of the entrance of the uterine tubes, is known as the fundus. The body gradually narrows from the fundus to the isthmus. Anterior to the origin of the fallopian tubes are the round ligaments one on each side, which extend anterolaterally, coursing through the inguinal canals and inserting onto the fascia of the labia majora. The uterus has a dual blood supply. The majority of blood supply is from the uterine arteries arising from the internal iliac arteries, and a minor blood supply is from the ovarian arteries. The uterus is physiologically most often anteroverted and anteroflexed but may also be retroflexed or retroverted. The cervix of the uterus is fixed in the midline, but the body of the uterus can be mobile and may change with varying degrees of bladder and rectal distension. Descriptions of flexion refer to the relationship of the body of the uterus to the cervix. Usually the angle is about 270 degrees whereas version refers to the cervical relationship to the vagina. The vagina, uterus, and the urinary bladder are used as reference points for identification of the remaining normal and abnormal pelvic structures. The uterine size, shape, and orientation should be identified and documented in sagittal and transverse axial planes. The endometrium, myometrium, and cervix should be carefully evaluated and their appearance documented. The uterine length is measured in long axis from the fundus to the cervix and the anteroposterior dimension is measured on the same image perpendicular to the length. The width is to be measured on a separate image on either a transaxial or coronal plane of section. If the volume of the uterine corpus is assessed the cervical component should be excluded. Follow our next study on the ovaries, adnexa and fallopian tubes. Then we continue with identification of pathologies. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and press notification.